so now we are going to replace a head on a kettle drum. So exciting. First you want to spin your drum till it's as loose as possible. Center the head. Add the rim. Center it. And line it up with the tension rods. All five of them. This is such a cool design. There's a rolling nut that fits up underneath and that's what grabs the screw. Very easy to thread through and just get them started. The leather washer will help it uh, to stay in place so that it doesn't vibrate off or make extra extra noise. Okay, once you get the bolts into the nuts, then you tighten them by hand and you do the same procedure as you would if you were tuning. You go across on each one. Okay, so that's very loose and now rotate it to tune it. It's really important with timpani and kettle drums that you know what the range of the instrument is. I would go even as far as Printing out the range, just snag it off a catalog and cut it out. Um, make sure you know what size drum you have and then the note range, you can actually print it out, laminate it, put it on the side of the drum or put it somewhere where you can see it and where your students can see it. So you don't ever try and tune a drum higher than the range it should be playing. You'll get the most out of your drums and it'll sound the best if you do that. So to make sure that the tension is distributed evenly, you need to check each spot on the drum and make adjustments with the tuning key. So this is the C, it's the bottom of the range, and now we're going to take it up to the top of the range. A difference. Remember with all drums to loosen them before you finish for the day. So when you leave your classroom, all hand drums, all timpani, all kettle drums should be tuned down so they're nice and flabby and they can rest until you're ready to make music the next day. And then happy playing.